Hi, I'm Lori Sweeney, and thank you so much for your time and this possible opportunity. I just wanted to give you a little heads up. When I do teach a regular class, I will go at a slower pace. I will also be engaging. I will walk around, make eye contact, do demos right on the board, do a little technology. And I'm really just trying to showcase various topics and show you how I work in tips and tricks. So I am going to present and add little comments here and there. And uh, we're going to talk about acids and bases class. So what we are going to do is um, we're going to review what we did before uh, and then lead up into naming acids and bases. So I have a lot of experience with acids and bases, not just because I taught biology and chemistry at a private high school in New Jersey, but I was a scientist. And you can see in the background, there are a lot of chemicals, a lot of acids and bases. So I have a lot of firsthand experience. So let's quickly go over what we learned yesterday. We learned about the acids, the definition, the Arrhenius definition is a substance that produces hydrogen ions in the water solution. So when you see this hydrogen chloride gas in water, added to water, it dissociates into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. The Bronsted definition, as we know, is just what is happening. The definition is basically telling you what is going to happen in the solution, and it will be a proton donor. The properties of the acids, well, it reacts with active metals and produces hydrogen gases. So when we look at this reaction, remember class, we learned about single displacement. So the positively charged, the cation, the zinc, is going to replace the positively charged hydrogen to form zinc chloride. And remember that hydrogen gets kicked out and it's diatomic, so it's two. So there's your hydrogen gas. Another property is that it ionizes when added to water. And the stronger the acid, the better the ionization. When you add an acid to a base, it neutralizes it and forms a salt plus water. So remember class, we did the double displacement reaction where the cation will pair with a different anion. So we have H pairing with OH, that is the same as water, H2O. And then you have your sodium plus your chloride and you have sodium chloride. Acids are sour. And it's actually the Latin word for sour. And some examples are fruits, such as your citrus fruits, vinegar, and even spoiled milk. Lactose is in milk. And as it spoils, it's converted to lactic acid. So it is that lactic acid that has that sour taste. For bases, remember class a long time ago, well, actually a few days ago, we were talking about OH, remember we were learning our polyatomic ions and the good way to remember OH is hydroxide. I told you that my favorite cookie when I was a kid was hydrox cookies, the knockoff of the Oreo. So you say, oh, I love hydrox cookies. So when you see that OH, you think of, oh, oh, I love hydrox, hydroxide. The Arrhenius definition, remember we learned for Arrhenius acid, it yields hydrogen ions, but for bases, it yields hydroxide ions in the water solution. Remember, Bronsted acid is a proton donor, but the Bronsted base is the proton acceptor. And we can see that in this reaction. And remember our Lewis dot structures that we learned? So I took the hydrogen and I put the electron as an X. So you can see what belongs to what. So the hydrogen donates to the water. So that is the proton donor and the water is the proton acceptor. And you can see that it donates to the water. Now you have H3O, the hydronium ion. Properties of bases, they're electrolytes. They can conduct an electrical current and it neutralizes acids. Remember an acid plus a base gives you salt and water and it tastes bitter and it feels slippery. A lot of your bases are your cleaners and also some sugar and baking soda and acetone. Now that we had our light review from the last lesson, 
Now we're going to learn how to name acids. And of course, I would write this more and cross out things and, and show how it's done. But when you have binary acids, remember bi means two, like bicycle is two wheels. So binary, we have two elements. It's going to be your hydrogen and then your anion. And what you would do is you would focus on that anion. You write hydro at the beginning, you drop its suffix and you add an ick at the end, and then the separate word acid after it. So when we have HCl in the gas phase, we just name it according to the anion. So we have hydrogen, and then the Cl is your chloride. So we have hydrogen chloride, but when it is aqueous, that phase is aqueous, it's an acid, and we follow the instructions above. So we are going to write chloride. We're going to cross out the IDE. We're going to put hydro in the front, ick in place of the IDE, and then acid. So it's going to be hydrochloric acid. Same with hydrogen bromide. Let's write bromide, write hydro in the front, get rid of the ide, add ick, and then acid, hydrobromic acid. And then we would try some examples and see if they can do that on their own. For ternary, we have three different elements. So remember your polyatomic ions that we memorized, the common ones. So if you see that a polyatomic ion ends in eight, like nitrate, you're going to cross that out and put ick, you have ick acid. And then if you have a polyatomic ion that ends in ite, you cross that out and write us, and it will be us, and then you add acid at the end. So a good way to remember this is I ate so much ick, or I ate so much fast food, ick. Uh, I don't feel so well. And then for I, a lot of people blend words. We all do sometimes think I'm gonna do, do this instead of I'm going to do this. So I, a lot of people say, all right, they say I. So I say, I, uh, it is us here. We're going to learn some chemistry or it's I, it's us over here. We're gonna learn chemistry. However, whatever you wanna use, whatever sentence will help you, and I, it's us here, we're going to learn chemistry, however you want to do it. So just a cute little way to remember it. So what we will do is we have nitrate and we would cross out the AT. I ate so much ick, nitric, and then acid. And then here's your nitrite and we will cross out the IT. I, it's us here learning chemistry and it is us, so nitrous acid. And we would continue and do some examples and write them on the board. To name bases, it's very simple because most strong bases contain hydroxide. So you would just name the cation and the anion. We have sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and so on. And we would do more examples, more unique examples on the board. For pH, it indicates how acidic or basic something is. Now that we know the definition of acids and bases, now we're going to get into detail how to measure that to determine if it's an acid or a base. So pH is, um, is really, really, it's the power of hydrogen. That's what it stands for. And it measures the hydrogen ion concentration in the solution. So here's the equation for it, but the pH meter actually gives us this value and measures it for us. And if we use a pH meter and it gives us a reading of four, what does that mean? So we have a pH scale based on those readings. It shows us the relationship between the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration. So here's our pH scale. It was created by Soren Sorensen. And you can see some of them range from zero to 14. On this one here, it's one to 14. And you do end up having, um, the, the numbers do mean the same thing. If it is a pH of seven, it is neutral and that's pure water. As you increase the number, it is a stronger base. So the higher the number, the higher the base above seven. But for acids, it's very different. So in this case, to the left, those are your acids below seven, but the lower the number, the stronger the acid. So if you had 
a pH of 6.7, that might be acid rain, let's say. And that's a weak acid. But if you're talking about hydrochloric acid, which has a pH of three, you could put that on some wood, it will eat through it instantaneously. That's how strong of an acid it is. So why is pH important? It's nice we have that, but it's what's the purpose of it? Well, we test the soil for pH because certain crops cannot grow if the soil is too acidic or basic. So it has to be just the right pH and it can be adjusted safely and accordingly. You could test the water for drinking. A lot of water companies do that, not just to test the water for impurities, but also to make sure the pH is balanced. So it's safe to drink. It's not too acidic or basic. Pools, the same thing. So skin will not be irritated. Pool companies always test the pH. And also for bodies of water, like lakes, streams, ponds, the environmental agencies do test this because if the water is too acidic or basic, the living things in these bodies of water will, will die. And then from my perspective, when I used to formulate products such as shampoos and conditioners, well, it has to be the right pH especially something that is going to be put on your body. Because let's say a shampoo and you put that in your hair, what's going to happen? Maybe some of your hair will fall out or you will have and or tremendous skin irritation. So it is really important to get a good balance of pH and products and in, in our environment. So guess what class? It is lab time. What time is it? It's lab time, time to investigate. So we are going to have an activity and we are going to find the pH of various household items. And we're going to find it in many ways. We're gonna find the pH using pH paper, pH meter, and also another cool indicator. And you'll never guess what it is because it's so odd. Cabbage juice. And please thank Mrs. Sweeney over here. She spent hours boiling cabbage all afternoon to make sure there would be plenty of cabbage juice for you for this experiment. Now, this is a really great thing. Uh, it also poinsettias have the same effect. They're very good pH indicators. You can boil the leaves. Well, since it's not Christmas time, it's very difficult to find poinsettias. So we will stick with cabbage juice, but it has this pigment called flavin, and it reacts with the hydrogen ions. And when it does for in the acid, it will turn the solution reddish pinkish. If it reacts with the hydroxide ions of the base, it will turn the solution bluish, yellow, greenish, and it's really, really amazing. So it's a lot of fun to try. And it's really important because an average person can use this to test pool water, the koi pond, even soil. So it's very, very practical for an average person. So here's the cabbage juice scale, and you do have that on your handout when you do the lab. So you will be able to see the color and then match it to find the pH range that your solution is in. And uh, make sure you hand in the lab activity before you leave today. And also I know we're using common household items, but please make sure we are following the laboratory safety practices. So we are going to wear our goggles and we are going to still practice our regular lab safety always, okay? So just wanted to make that clear. And just as an aside, uh, this is what the cabbage juice experiment looks like. And they have a wide range of colors and really is a lot of fun for the students to see that and even compare it to the pH meter readings and so on. And then of course, the last 20 minutes of class will be for them to start their homework and I would be available to answer any questions they have. So that is my presentation. And again, I thank you so much for your time.